Let's imagine a scenario. On the river, there's a duck swimming. On the bank, there's a person standing there watching the duck. And on the river, there's another person who is moving on his boat, and he is also watching the duck. Just from experience, you should be able to tell that the motion of the duck looks different to these two different observers. To the eyes of the observer on the boat, the duck probably swims much slower than to the eyes of the observer on the bank. We will use this example to explain relative motion. Since the person on the bank is not moving, we can set up a fixed reference frame, that is, a 3D rectangular coordinate system originated on him. To his eyes, both the person on the boat and the duck are moving, and at any given point, again, their positions can be represented by position vectors, R A and R B. These two positions are known as the absolute positions. Since they are observed from a reference frame fixed on Earth, but if we want to see motions from the eyes of the person on the boat, we set up another reference frame fixed on him. Therefore, this reference frame will move with him. This reference frame is parallel to our fixed reference frame on Earth, and depending on what kind of motion it is. If it is a translating motion, then this reference frame is called the translating frame. The word translating here is used in contrast to rotating or rotational motion, which will be discussed later in this course. So, in the eyes of this person on the boat, the position of the duck is represented by a position vector originated from him, position vector R B slash A. Which means the relative position of B relative to the observer A. We learned vector addition already, and we learned about the parallelogram law and triangle rule. So we can easily tell that this vector R B slash A equals to vector R B minus vector R A. Again, the relative position R of B relative to A equals to R B minus R A. Once again, R B and R A are both absolute positions observed from a fixed frame on the Earth. I think this notation of the formula is easy to remember, since B slash A equals to B minus A, the same consistent order. But sometimes you will see it rewritten this way: R B equals to R A plus R B slash A, which is the same thing. And if we take the time derivative of the entire equation. We can get the relation of relative velocity written in a similar format. Be careful, though. This is only true because we are using a translating reference frame in which the x prime, y prime, and z prime axes don't change direction with time. It is not true if we are using a rotating reference frame, as we will discuss later in this course. And this can also be rewritten as v b equals to v a plus v b slash a. And similarly, for acceleration, the relative acceleration b relative to a equals to a b minus a a, or it could be written this way. Keep in mind that all these equations are given in vector form. Let's look at this example. The two objects a and b are moving along different paths. Their velocities at this instant are given. And also, we know that the speed of A is increasing at 10 meter per second squared, and the speed of B is decreasing at 5 meter per second squared. We need to determine the relative velocity and acceleration of A with respect to B. Since B moves along a translating path, we can apply our equations of relative motions that we derived earlier. First, we set up a fixed Cartesian coordinate system x and y, and the absolute velocity of object A given in vector form is 4j, and the absolute velocity of object B is negative 8i. Therefore, according to the equation, the relative velocity of A relative to B equals to v A minus v B. Remember the consistent order. Therefore. This equals to 8i plus 4j 
meter per second in Cartesian vector form? And that's the answer. But we can also calculate the magnitude, which is 8.94 meter per second. For acceleration, don't forget object A is doing curvilinear motion. Therefore, it has two acceleration components. AT, the tangential acceleration, and AN, the normal acceleration, which always points towards the center of curvature. Since we know that the speed of A is increasing at 10 meter per second squared, and that is the tangential acceleration, because remember, the tangential acceleration equals to, in scalar form, dv dt, and it describes the change in speed. So, AAT is simply 10 j meter per second squared, and the normal acceleration of object A, AN, is evaluated by the equation v squared over rho, rho being the radius of curvature, and it can be calculated to be 32i meter per second squared. Therefore, for object A, its acceleration in Cartesian vector form is 32i plus 10j meter per second squared. For object B, it is doing rectilinear motion. Its speed is decreasing at 5 meter per second squared, which means that its acceleration is in the opposite direction of its velocity. Since its velocity points to the left, the negative x direction, therefore the acceleration of object B points to the right, or positive x direction, being 5i. Therefore, these two absolute accelerations are both written in vector form. We can apply the equation for relative acceleration. The acceleration of A relative to B equals to AA minus AB. Again, pay attention to the order of the subscripts. And if we do the Cartesian vector addition subtraction, this equals to 27i plus 10j meter per second squared. And that is the answer in Cartesian form. Or we can also find the magnitude to be 28.8 meter per second squared.